We often talk about rest periods as a single variable that should be applied in the same way for all exercises. However, it is probably best to use different rest periods for different exercises. In this video, we will explain why this is the case and how long we should rest for compound versus isolation lifts. Before getting into the details about rest periods for muscle growth, we first need to understand a fundamental component of hypertrophy training. Essentially, to maximize muscle growth, we want to stress the target muscle as much as possible. So basically, we want fatigue of the target muscle to be the limiting factor of each set so that it is maximally stressed. And adaptations occur at the systems that we want, which is the local muscle tissue. However, when we perform an exercise, the target muscle is not the only system that is being stressed. We also involve other muscles to stabilize joints and assist the movement, and also the cardiorespiratory system, which is the heart and lungs delivering oxygen to the working muscles and removing oxygen depleted air. So really, whenever we perform a lift, we should realize that there are three primary systems which can all limit performance of a set. And like we mentioned, we always want the target muscle to be the limiting factor of each set, not any other muscles and not the cardiorespiratory system. There are many different variables which can influence which systems attack to different degrees, like exercise selection and lifting technique, but interset rest periods can also have a big impact. Throughout the rest of this video, we will explore how rest periods can influence this and how long we should rest to maximize stress of the target muscle. Now that we have covered this fundamental concept of hypertrophy training, we can now look at how rest periods influence muscle growth. Traditionally, it was thought that shorter rest periods are superior for muscle growth. However, recent evidence suggests that this may not be true, at least in some cases. If we look at the overall body of research about how rest periods influence muscle growth, we generally find that longer rest periods tend to be slightly superior. This systematic review compiled the data from six studies looking at the effects of interset rest on hypertrophy. It was concluded that significant muscle growth can be achieved across a range of different rest periods, but longer rest periods tended to be slightly superior than short rest. However, this type of evidence takes a big picture perspective of the overall body of research. If we look into slightly more detail at some individual studies, we tend to find some conflicting evidence. And this discrepancy can likely be explained by the type of exercises implemented into the training routine. So let's now look into a little more detail about how rest periods may influence muscle growth differently between compound versus isolation lifts. First, let's explore how rest periods influence muscle growth when training with compound lifts. In this study, trainees performed a full body resistance training program consisting of almost all compound lifts. As we can see, the exercises included were all compound lifts apart from the leg extension. Trainees performed these lifts for eight weeks with half the lifters resting for one minute between sets and the other half resting for three minutes between sets. And as we can see in the blue bars, longer rest periods resulted in superior muscle growth of all muscles measured. So this study falls in line with the overall body of research, suggesting that longer rest periods may be superior for muscle growth, at least when training with compound lifts or in the context of a full body workout. However, when we look at the research on isolation lifts, the research tends to find different results. For example, this study explored the effects of arm training with different rep ranges and rest periods on biceps and triceps muscle growth. One group performed more traditional style training using an eight rep max load with three minutes rest, while another group performed more metabolite style training using a 20 rep max load with 30 seconds rest. As we can see, the exercises used in this study were all isolation lifts like bicep curls and tricep extensions, apart from the close grip bench press, which is technically a compound lift. The results of this study were much different, showing that the short rest high repetition group saw greater muscle growth after eight weeks of training compared with the longer rest group. And this isn't the only study finding these results. There are a few other studies which find similar results with isolation lifts. Another example is this study, which explored the effects of drop sets, where multiple sets were performed in succession with no rest, versus traditional training with 90 seconds rest between sets during tricep extensions. 
As we can see, like the previous study, the drop set training resulted in greater triceps hypertrophy compared with the traditional training group. While neither of these studies completely isolated rest periods alone, we do see a trend that shorter rest periods may be similarly or even more hypertrophic compared with longer rest periods for isolation lifts. So as we can see, we have somewhat of a divide in the research. There is likely no single best rest period to implement, rather rest periods may need to be individualized based on the exercise we are performing. In general, we find superior muscle growth with longer rest periods for compound lifts, but superior muscle growth with shorter rest periods for isolation lifts. So why is this the case? Why are longer rest periods usually better for compound lifts, but shorter rest periods may be equally as effective or even superior for isolation lifts? Well, this likely comes down to what we mentioned at the beginning of the video. What systems are the limiting factor? When performing compound lifts such as squats, military press, or bent over rows, not only is the target muscle being stressed, but there are many other stabilizer muscles involved and higher demands on the cardiorespiratory system. And like we have established, we want the target muscle to be the limiting factor, not any other systems. So for these lifts, we need rest periods to be long enough for other systems to recover so that they don't limit performance of subsequent sets. If rest periods are too short, then the cardiorespiratory system or other accessory muscles may fatigue and limit performance before the target muscle. On the other hand, most isolation lifts like bicep curls, calf raises or lateral raises have very few accessory muscles involved and very little cardiorespiratory demands. This means that no matter how short our rest periods are, the target muscle is almost always going to be the limiting factor of each set assuming our technique is strict and effective. So we can get away with shorter rest periods and still train the muscle to its maximal capacity. So to summarize this video, let's establish some practical recommendations. When we look at the overall body of research, we tend to find that longer rest periods seem to be more effective for muscle growth. However, if we dive a little deeper into the individual studies, we start to see some discrepancies. In general, the studies which use compound lifts as part of a full body workout find that longer rest periods are usually superior for muscle growth. However, the studies using isolation lifts usually find that shorter rest periods tend to be equal or even superior for muscle growth. The reason for this is likely due to which systems limit performance of each set. During compound lifts, we need to allow enough rest so that the accessory and stabilizer muscles and the cardiorespiratory system recover enough so that they don't limit each subsequent set. However, for isolation lifts, these other systems will almost never limit performance before the target muscle, regardless of how short rest periods are. So as a general guide, we probably want to rest longer for the heavy compound free weight lifts like squats and bent over rows, probably around two to four minutes as a general rule. And we should probably take shorter rest periods for isolation lifts like bicep curls and calf raises, probably around one and a half minutes or less. And the exercises in between, which may be compound lifts but aren't quite as taxing, such as seated cable rows or seated dumbbell shoulder press, should be somewhere between these two extremes, probably around one to three minutes of rest. So as we can see, rest periods should probably be individualized based on the exercise we are performing. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks and more.